Hi guys, I'm Raul from Simply Learn and today I'd like to welcome all of you to this training video on Azure. Let's ask the question, what is Microsoft Azure? Microsoft Azure is actually a cloud service platform that allows users to build, manage, scale and deploy applications by giving them access to cloud services. Now these cloud services range from creating virtual machines to creating functions that run themselves without having to worry about hardware. Now all of this is made possible only through the internet. Now here are some things that you need to know about Azure. Firstly, it was launched on the 1st of February 2010. It has data centers in more than 42 regions across the world. They also say that 12 more data centers are in the making, which helps them say they're the only cloud service provider that covers these many regions. Next, Azure is preferred by 80% of the Fortune 500 companies, which means that the best of the best in the market only choose to work with Azure. And finally, Azure is the second largest cloud service provider in the market right now. Let's talk about Azure services. As I told you, Azure provides services for a wide range of domains. Now let's have a look at some of these domains. There's AI and machine learning, compute, containers, database, identity, management tools, networking, security, storage, and so much more. Now let's have a look at some of the individual services within these domains. Firstly, you have Azure Virtual Machines. With Azure Virtual Machines, what you get is the opportunity to create Windows or Linux virtual machines. Now all of this is possible in a matter of seconds with a large amount of customization. Now let's have a look at some of its features. Firstly, you can choose from a wide variety of virtual machine options. Then you have a large amount of optimization available to you. For example, what size of operating system do you want? How much size do you want allocated to it? What version of the system is it? And so much more. Then it provides low cost and per minute billing. Now Azure provides you per minute billing, which means that you're only charged for how much time you use the service. And finally, you have enhanced security and protection for your virtual machines. Next, we have Service Fabric. Now with Service Fabric, you have a platform which enables you to create microservices. Now this also makes the process of application lifecycle management a whole lot easier. As a direct result, you can create applications with a faster time to market. It supports Windows, Linux, on-premises or other clouds. And it enables you to do a tremendous amount of scaling up depending on your requirement. And finally, we have functions. Now with functions, you can build applications with the help of serverless computing. Here, the users only pay for the amount of resources that they've used. You can create applications in any language that you want. And the only thing you need to worry about is the code of the application. Everything other than that, that is the hardware requirements, are taken care of by Azure. Now let's have a look at the networking services. Firstly, we have the Azure CDN or the Content Delivery Network. With Azure CDN, what you get is the ability to deliver your content with reduced load times, fast responsiveness, and less bandwidth. Now, CDN can be integrated with several other Azure services so that the process can move at a faster rate. It can handle heavy loads and traffic spikes with ease. It also provides a robust security system. Now, with the content that's delivered, you can get advanced analytic data with which you can understand how customers are using your content. Next, we have Express Route. With Express Route, you can connect your on-premises network to Azure through a private network. Now, by default, this lowers latency, it increases the emphasis on reliability and speed, and it can be of great use when you have to transfer large amounts of data between networks. Now, another way this can be useful is if it's used to add compute or storage capacity to data centers. Next, we have Azure DNS. Domain name service or Azure DNS can be used to host your domains on Azure. This provides high availability and great performance. It provides fast responses to DNS queries by taking advantage of Microsoft's global network. It also provides high availability. Next, we have Virtual Network. Azure Virtual Network allows the Azure resources to communicate with each other or other on-premise networks via the internet, and all of this is kept extremely secure. Now with this, users can create their own private network for communication. It provides users with an isolated and extremely secure environment for their applications to run. Now, all of the traffic stays entirely within the Azure network, and it also allows users to design their own networks. Next, we have Traffic Manager. Now, with Traffic Manager, you can route incoming traffic to improve your performance and availability. Now, one thing it provides is multiple failover options. So, if a particular situation goes wrong, there's always an option to consider to salvage the situation. It helps reduce application runtime and enables the distribution of user traffic across multiple locations. It also helps the people who are using it to know where the customers connecting from across the world. 
Next, we have Load Balancer. With this, you have provided the ability to instantly scale applications at the same time providing high availability and improved network performance for users' applications. It can be integrated into virtual machines and cloud services. It provides highly reliable applications. It also allows users to secure and integrate security groups. Finally, we have Azure VPN Gateway. Now this allows users to connect their on-premise networks to Azure using a site-to-site -site VPN. Now this allows users to connect their virtual machine to anywhere in the world through a point-to-site VPN. And also it's very easy to manage and is highly available. Now let's talk about the storage services. First, we have Data Lake Storage. Now with this, what you get is a scalable data storage with an emphasis on cost effectiveness and scalability. Now it comes of maximum use when you've integrated with other services so that you can get analytics on how the data is being used. It is also integrated with other services like the Azure Blob Storage. Now it is also optimized for big data analysis tools like Apache Spark and Hadoop. Next up, we have Blob Storage. Now blob storage provides a storage capacity for data. Now depending on how often a particular data is used, it is classified into different tiers. Now all the data that is within the blob storage is unstructured data. Now it has a way of ensuring that the data integrity is maintained every time a particular object is being changed or the data is being accessed. And it also helps improve app performance and reduces bandwidth consumption. Next we have queue storage. Now with this, you have a message queuing system for large workloads. This allows users to build flexible applications and separate functions. Not to mention with this, you can be sure that your individual components will not fail. It also makes sure that your application is scalable. Queue storage provides queue monitoring, which helps ensure that the customer's demands are met. Then we have file storage. Now with file storage, you can perform file sharing with the help of the SMB protocol or the server message block protocol. Now this data is protected by SMB 3.0 and the HTTPS protocol. In this case, like we mentioned in functions, Azure takes care of all the hardware needs and the operating system deployments on its own. It also improves on-premises performance and other capabilities. Lastly, we have table storage. With table storage, you can deploy semi-structured data sets and no SQL key value store. Now this is used for creating applications which have a flexible data schema and also considering how it has a very strong consistency model, it's mainly aimed for enterprises. Next, let's have a look at some web and mobile services. First, we have the Azure Search. Now with Azure Search, you get a cloud search service which is powered by artificial intelligence. With this, you can develop web applications as well as mobile applications. Now one big advantage is that you don't have to set up or manage your search indices. Azure takes care of that and by extension, it increases your development speed. The artificial intelligence also will provide insights and structured information that you can use to improve the search and structured information. Next, we have Logic Apps. Now with this, you can create integration solutions which can connect applications that are important to your business. Now with this, you can visually create business processes and workflows. You can integrate SaaS or software as a service applications and enterprise applications. And more importantly, it allows you to unlock data within a firewall and securely connect to services. Next, we have web applications. Now with web apps, you can create, deploy and scale web applications according to business requirements. Now it supports both Windows and Linux platforms and it helps with continuous integration or deployment abilities. Another very important aspect of this is that the data can be deployed and hosted across multiple locations in the world. And finally, we have mobile apps. With mobile apps, you can create applications for iOS, Android, and Windows platforms. One advantage is that it automatically scales up and down based on your requirements. Now, in situations where you have network issues, offline data syncing ensures that your applications work anyway and you can create cross-platform applications or native applications for iOS, Android, and Windows. Next, let's have a look at some container services. First, let's talk about ACS or Azure Container Services. It is also known as the Azure Kubernetes Services as it's a fully managed Kubernetes container orchestration service. Now, what this means is that it eases the process of container integration and deployment. It also can be used with other resources from security like virtual networks, cryptographic keys, and so much more to ensure that your container is kept secure. Next, we have container instances. 
Now, this is similar to functions in a way, just that in this we're using containers without having to manage servers. Now, applications can be developed here without managing virtual machines or learning new tools. All that is Azure's problem to take care of. And it enables building applications without having to manage the infrastructure. That is, all you need to worry about is running the container. Next, let's have a look at some database services. First, we have the SQL database. Now with SQL database, what you get is a relational cloud database service. Now, this means that it helps accelerate your app development and makes it easier for you to maintain your application. Now, SQL database is also used extensively in migrating workloads to the cloud and hence saves time and cost. It also helps improve your performance by integrating machine learning and adaptive technologies into your database. Next, we have Azure Cosmos DB. Now, this is a globally distributed multi-model database service. Now, what this means is that with this, you can create application with support NoSQL. It provides a high-grade security system, has high availability and low latency. Now, this is usually used in situations where you have a diverse and highly unpredictable workload. Now, let's have a look at some security and identity services. Firstly, we have the Azure Active Directory. Now, if you want to know more about Azure Active Directory, I suggest you click on the top right corner and watch our video on the Azure Active Directory. This is just an introduction. So with this, you can manage user identities and you can make sure the resources are kept safe with the help of access policies. Most of these are intelligence driven. Now, one of the main features is that you can have access to your applications from any location or device. It helps increase your efficiency and helps down cutting costs when it comes to having a help desk. It can also help improve security and can respond to advanced threats in real time. Next, you have Azure Active Directory B2C. It helps provide customer identity and access management in the cloud. Now, protecting customer identity is extremely important for an organization and that's what Azure AD B2C does. Now, it also enables the application to be scaled to great amounts, even billions of customers. Next, we have the Azure Security Center. This is basically like a command post with which you get a complete view of the security across users on your on-premises and cloud workloads. So with this, you are given a threat protection method that adapts to situations and helps reduce exposing you to threats. It also has rapid threat response and makes the process of finding and fixing vulnerabilities a whole lot easier. Next up, let's talk about monitoring and management services. So first, let's have a look at Azure Advisor. Now, Azure Advisor is basically a guide for the best practices when it comes to Azure. Now, when you follow these, it improves performance, security, cost, and increases availability. Now, it also learns from how you use the services on your configuration and usage pattern. And the adjustments that it suggests can be implemented very quickly and easily. Next, we have Network Watcher. Now, with this, you can monitor, diagnose, and understand the working of your network. Now, you can monitor your network without actually having to log in to your virtual machine. Now, you can also use something known as Network Security Flow Logs to understand the traffic pattern. How much traffic is coming towards you, how much you are giving, and so much more. It also helps diagnose VPN problems that you might have with detailed logs. And finally, you have the Azure Resource Manager. Now, with this, you can ensure that the resources that you have are managed and deployed at a consistent rate. Now, this makes it extremely easy for you to manage and visualize your resources that are used in your applications or some other requirements. And you can control who can access your resources as well as perform actions on it. I hope you guys found this informative and helpful. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.